This presentation is on the complaint process, student code of conduct, and due process. One of the most important things that you need to understand as a Lost State Community College student is really the moment you really enter our campus or, of course, apply and become a student of Lost State, you come under um, the code of conduct for the institution. And one of the things that's also important for you to know is where to find that student code of conduct. Uh, where you need to go is, of course, the student catalog. This is actually a student catalog as well as a student handbook. So if you notice, the wording is student handbook and catalog. And as you can see, this will expire, not the rules, but this book will expire in 2011, and a new book will come out in 2000 for the 2011, 12, and 12, and 13. So it, we have a catalog and handbook every year. The, the important thing for you to, to be aware of is that regardless of what year it is, you fall within the rules and regulations that I'm explaining and outlining for you today. So the very first thing I'm going to do is click on the bookmarks tab and that will outline all of the important things that are in here. And the next area where I want to go to would be college policies, rules, and regulations. Now one of the things that's important for you to note is that we don't expect you to you know, read everything that's in the handbook and catalog as, you know, every day. But what you need to do is make sure you're aware of what's in the catalog and as things come up you need to refer back to the catalog. For instance, if you have a question about the dress code, you fall under the dress code policy and it's encumbered upon you to read the dress code policy. So you fall under these rules. So you can't simply say, oh, I didn't know about the rule. It doesn't work that way. You have access to the catalog, so it's important for you to go back and review these specifics. Okay? Um, the very first thing that I want to talk to you about is following proper channels of communication. And one of the things that's very important is that, of course, Lawson State wants you to be able to express any concerns, your op opinions about things, or you may have to submit a grievance, as you can see up here. And the, the student handbook will outline for you how do you go about doing that. The most important thing that you need to be aware of is that you need to follow the proper, proper channels of communication when voicing any concerns. And if you notice, there's a hierarchy of how you're supposed to do things. You never just want to walk into the president's office and issue a complaint. That's improper because we have all of these different chains of commands, <coughs> excuse me, channels of communication that you need to follow. If it's an issue with an instructor, you need to first speak with the instructor privately. It is improper to air your concerns in front of the entire class in a, in a, in a you know, boisterous way. That is improper. What you need to do is to see that instructor outside of the class, set an appointment with that instructor, and in a very professional manner, deliver your concerns to the instructor. It's only fair because if you don't ever you know, sit down and speak with the instructor, how does he or she have the ability to, number one, respond to your concern, and number two, make corrective action? Okay. A lot of times what we find with students is that it's just a misunderstanding. Maybe you missed the announcement in class, maybe you didn't read the Blackboard announcement, and because of it there's a conflict. So first, try to work it out with the instructor. Leave emotion out of it. Be professional and always be courteous. If you meet with the instructor and, it, you, and you're still not satisfied with the end result, all instructors have a division chair, or what we call a department chair. So your next task is to um, talk to the department chair who is responsible for that particular unit. Okay? And typically at that stage, the instructor will be invited to attend a meeting with you and the department chair. Okay? After that, after the meeting with the department chair and the instructor, if you're still dissatisfied, then you need to contact the third person, which is the associate dean. This can be an associate dean or the assistant dean. Okay? And at that point, the associate dean, the division chair, and the instructor will all get together and meet. Okay? And they will all get together and meet together to talk about your concern. Typically, at that juncture, most student concerns are resolved in a very amicable way. If, for if that doesn't work, then the fourth level would be your dean. 
Okay. At that point, the dean would typically meet, again, with all four individuals. Now we're involving the dean, the associate dean, the division chairperson, and the instructor. And if those four individuals typically would get together with the student, sometimes the student likes to bring a parent, that's also fine, uh, but it's up to the student. You don't have to. And then we talk and work out the problem. It is very rare for things not to work out on that level. The only time we're going to involve the vice president is when you feel the student still is dissatisfied after meeting with the dean, the associate dean, the department chair, and the instructor. And then you can involve the vice president of instruction. Um, it is very, 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 I'm stressing this, rare to involve the president in an instructional issue. Um, and again, what's important for students to understand is that you do need to follow the proper channel of communication in order to resolve conflicts. Okay. Now I'm going to scroll down. As you can see, you can always reference this information. I'm going to scroll down to talk about the next issue that you need to be aware of. I'm going to briefly talk about children on campus. This has come up quite a lot at our institution, so I do want to highlight it today. One of the things that you need to understand is that this is a college campus and that the policy as it relates to children on campus is very clear on the campus of Lawson State. I'm going to read a couple sentences here. In order to maintain the proper environment for the effective delivery of college level instruction, students are not permitted to bring children to classrooms, labs, or shops at Lawson State Community College, nor should students leave unattended children in any building or in any grounds of the college at any time. From time to time, activities that minor children may be invited to attend are scheduled at Lawson State. So what you have to understand is that that policy does exist and it's extremely important that you not bring children on campus, it's particularly bringing them um, into a classroom or a lab in a classroom setting is in inappropriate. Okay. Alright, I'm going to scroll over here if you look. Next I want to talk to you about the no discrimination, no harassment policy. Um, one of the things you just need to be aware of is that this is, you should always feel comfortable on campus. And we have a very, very stern no discrimination and no harassment policy that, again, I'm not going to read all this to you, but you need to be aware of it. I would encourage you to read this policy. As I was saying, we don't expect you to read this whole book, but certain things in this particular handbook you should be aware of. And the no discrimination and no harassment policy is one of those areas. You should always feel comfortable on campus. Now, sexual harassment, or it could just be harassment of any kind. It could be someone um, bullying you on campus, which is very rare, but if it happens, it needs to be reported, and it will not be tolerated. If someone is making you feel uncomfortable on this campus in any way, um, it could be from a sexual nature or a physical assault nature, you need to report such incidences immediately to um, you could report them to a teacher, just any employee at the campus, a teacher, an advisor, the police department, and we will handle it immediately. But there are particular policies that govern um, your protection on campus. If you notice down here how to report instance, instances of alleged discrimination or harassment, that will get into more of the details, and it's actually giving you phone numbers and things like that. Okay, you can follow that, um, that policy. We also talk about how the college will investigate complaints. We investigate such complaints immediate, immediately, and there you should never have to worry about retaliation, reporting of an incident. Now, let's talk about the student code of conduct, which is extremely important. As a student of Lawson State, you fall under a series of code of conduct issues. Um, the first one I want to talk to you about is college documents and policies. Um, and if you notice under college documents and policies, uh, let's look at the first one. Furnishing false or misleading information and or forgery, altering or misusing college documents. Let's say that you are um, completing an, a form that requires a teacher's signature of, of some sort. 
and you decide you can't find this, the teacher for a while, so you decide just to put their name and sign their name for them. Well, that falls under student code of conduct, and you can actually be disciplined for that type of behavior on campus. So if you notice, there's all types of issues here, disclosing records and files, uh, misusing college computers, um, going into our computers and changing um, settings and things like that, manipulating, um, using them for improper use, uh, writing insufficient fund checks, things like that. You can see here they all fall under that. Even in terms of sponsored activities, your behavior on uh, sponsored activities, you see gambling of any form is inappropriate, selling things on campus is inappropriate, even putting things up, you know, like sometimes I walk around campus and I see students putting up advertisements on campus, those things have to be approved. They all fall under um, various policies. If we go under college and personal property, defacing or damaging or destroying college property, stealing property from the college, um, eating and drinking in unauthorized unth areas, especially in classrooms, shops, and laboratories. So a lot of students aren't aware that there's a policy about eating and drinking in class. So, I mean, these are things, as I was telling you, that you would not necessarily know, but it's important for you to be aware that you fall under that. T this one deals with college instruction in terms of your behavior. Um, in terms of what's going on in the classroom, preventing or attempting to prevent a student from entering or exiting a um, classroom or a faculty or administration, failing to obey directions of a faculty, administrator, or security officer in situations relating to the regular operation of college. So this is important in that, so this, I want to stop here because oftentimes students believe, well, you know, I'm an adult. I'm an adult. Yes, you are an adult, and we respect you as an adult, but you have to understand that just like in any institution, faculty, administration, and security officers, they are the individuals who are in charge and who are managing and running the institution. So you, it does fall under the disciplinary code of conduct to obey the directions of faculty, administrators, and security. Um, firearms, drugs, and alcohol are not permitted on campus, which I'm sure you are already aware of. And then we talk about, down here, dis definitions of disciplinary actions. One of the things that you need to be aware of is that if, in fact, you're found to be in um, contrast to the code of conduct, that means that you have violated a code of conduct, um, there is a process in which the college will take you through. Um, and so this area is talking about the different things that can happen to discipline you. There's a warning. You can be put on probation, as you can see right here. You can, have, you can be immediately suspended from the institution. Okay? And you can be suspended from the institution for a period of time, or you could actually, which is the most severe, be dismissed from the institution, which is a severe penalty. However, before any such penalty can be placed on a student, you have rights, and they're called due process rights. So let's read this. The college recognizes the right of both substantive and procedural due process in any matter involving a student misconduct violation. A student is entitled to a notice, a hearing, and an explanation before receiving a suspension or expulsion from college. So before we can suspend you or expel you from this institution, you will be entitled to go through what we call a due process hearing. There is such a thing as a penalty without hearing. Let's take a look at that. In the event a student wishes to waive the right to a formal hearing or makes voluntary written confession, of the allegation and waives the right to a hearing, the violation may be administra administratively disposed and that means that you can waive your right to that. So in this section of the catalog, as you can see, is walking you through the formal hearing process okay, and all of the due, due process procedures. Here we have a student grievance procedure. That means if you want to file a grievance, you need to follow, and that is a formal complaint. A grievance is a formal complaint. Okay? You would need to follow. Notice how it says step one. It's going to go step two, step three. As you can see, you need to follow this process to the letter. Okay. 
And so this section of the catalog, as you can see, walks students through the due process hearing. So, in brief, I have gone over the complaint process here at Lawson State, and in brief, not all of the code of conduct, but at least you're now aware that you do fall over under a specific code of conduct here at the institution that you're held accountable for, and also your due process rights as a student of Lawson State. If you have any additional questions as it relates to the complaint process, code of conduct, and due process, please contact someone in the Office of Student Life or Student Services. Thank you very much.